Our sense of taste can be subjective and food companies invest millions of euro every year on food sensory tests, seeking to predict what consumers might like about new products and comparing them to competitors on supermarket shelves. Companies would also come to us for quality control aspects. They have to make sure that when their product leaves their premises that it's going to deliver the same sensory expectation to the consumer time and time again. We'd also work a lot with shelf life testing because it's often the, the sensory quality of a product that deteriorates before the actual safety. So we can help determine you know, the best before date by measuring at what point do the sensory properties change and consumers no longer find it acceptable. The lab at Chagask is specifically designed to conduct food sensory tests where panels of experts evaluate and score the taste, flavour and texture of different food products. It requires training and fine tuning of the palate and we're about to see if we might have what it takes. Ready to go? Great. In front of you you will have six glasses. Each of them contain either sweet, sour, salt, bitter or umami and then there's one water. So we don't have to knock it back, it's just take a little taste. This is in shots. It tastes of nothing. <laughs> Okay. One of them is something, but I don't know what it is. I think the second one that I had was water, and so now I'm confused. Yeah. Are there any more crackers? Well, I start drinking the actual water going, what does that taste like? Oh no, it's water. I've got six waters. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm doing it wrong. Oh yeah. That tastes like lemon now, that one. Yes. I'm sure of that one. I am so confused. I actually thought I'd be really good at this. Does your 909 have a line underneath it? Mm, yeah. Are they trying to trick us with that? I think it's just to make sure they put it the right way up. Oh, it's supposed to 606? <laughs> Could be. Ugh. Oh, God. Sorry. What are you tasting? <laughs> God, what a cheater. Uh, are you getting anything, Katrina? I can only taste bitter and sour things, and I'm not really sure what the difference is. And maybe the sweet one. 693 to me tastes salty. Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> and the only other one I'm certain about is 549, which I think is the umami. Which yes. yes. Uh, I totally, yeah, yeah. I get that. That's actually quite a strong taste for me. I thought 802 was water, but I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, no, I think 802 is water. That's what I have down. 730 was sour, 245 was bitter, 693 was salt, 549 was umami, and 909 was water. Is there any more of 909? <laughs> Can I have another shot or have I been shut off? Human perception is incredibly complex, and while taste and smell are important factors in how we enjoy food, there's a multitude of other sensory, physical and psychological aspects that come into play. As humans, we are naturally influenced by our environment or who we're with. For example, like an average tasting meal or an average tasting wine can actually be quite, you know, an enjoyable or a memorable experience if it's eaten in the context of family and friends. A sensory lab is not really reflective of real life conditions. So at Chagas now we're using new technologies like virtual reality, where we can immerse people in a completely different world, in a, in a context in which that product would normally be consumed. Back in the sensory lab, we're going virtual. Guys, you should be able to see a nice green field. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it's some rolling green fields, lovely trees on the horizon, blue skies, fluffy clouds. I wish you were here. I want you to reach out in front of you and there's a piece of chocolate on a plate. So eat the chocolate, have a look around and think about how much you like it. I like it a lot. So on a scale of one to nine, where one is really bad, nine is really good, what would you give it? Eight. Good. Yeah, I'd say about eight. That was really delicious. I mean, you could be eating it at the side of the road and you'd be happy. Time to switch it up. How will our taste testers do in an environment with a bit more hustle and bustle? Ding, 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 there's the Lewis. We're in the middle of the IFSC. Can you describe that to us? This is the opposite of an open, expansive green field. It is 
concrete urban, confined. It has other people in it. The last place you'd throw down a picnic blanket. You wouldn't do that here. So I'm going to pass through the second chocolate. Now I want you to try it. I think I know that person. Is it impacting on what you're tasting, Jonathan? Didn't feel like I tasted it as much. It felt not as rich. You're, you're just as a level of anxiety looking at all this stuff. Is it exactly the same chocolate? Because it does taste a little bit different. Yeah, it is the exact same chocolate. Is it really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't taste as good. So Jonathan, if you had to rate this piece of chocolate now from one to nine, how would you rate it? A six, I think. It makes me think that like, if I was going to have a treat, maybe I would just wait until I got home and looked at the garden or a plant rather than having it while sitting on the Lewis. We ran a small study with about 50 people where we immersed them in both environments and we gave them the same chocolate and the landscape environment came out significantly favoured in comparison to the city environment. So if you are going to have a treat, you probably should just hold it until you're going to enjoy it somewhere nice. As you said, Katrina, kind of enjoy that delayed gratification a little bit. You sound like my mum. <laughs>